Hello everyone. Today's tutorial is on the Marcel tote. Um, the Marcel tote is a classic shaped tote. It has a slip pocket on the outside, um, a zipper pocket on the inside, and it closes with two magnetic snaps. It can be made with any um, material. It could be all fabric or all woven cotton or canvas. It can be made with vinyl, it can be made with cork leather, um, with the exception of a few pieces, you can use any type of fabric. These strap attachments, you will need to have a non-woven, so a vinyl or a cork leather or a leather. Um, for the strap attachments, I have a zipper overlay um, that also would need to be non-woven and then your snap stabilizers are going to be non-woven as well so aside from those three pieces everything else can be made with whatever type of fabric you would like you just want to interface accordingly today i'm going to be using a canvas for the main exterior with cork accents and then i'm just going to be using a woven quilting cotton for the inside lining so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with our exterior body construction. The first thing we're going to need to do is cut out notches from the top of our exterior body. Um, those are going to be made with our side accents. So what you want to do is go ahead and mark the dimensions in the pattern. The shorter dimension is going to be in from the sides, the longer dimension is going to be down from the top. And then you're just going to cut those pieces out. When you have those pieces cut, go ahead and set your main panels over to the side and we're going to move on to the next part. You will need your exterior pocket lining and um, exterior <coughs> portion for the fabric. I'm using cork for this accent piece. You want to put them wrong sides together and go ahead and clip them. And then you want to leave an opening for turning down at the bottom. Um, this opening is going to be at the bottom. So if you have directional fabric, you want this opening to be down at the bottom of your fabric. We're gonna take it over to the sewing machine, stitch around, and then flip it in right side out. We're going to sew around our exterior pocket with the seam allowance given in the pattern, starting at our mark for our opening and back stitching at the beginning and the end. Okay, now that we have our pockets sewn together, go ahead and clip your corners and turn it right side out. Once the pocket is turned right side out, go ahead and give it a press if you can to get your seams flat. Um, you're going to want to tuck in your bottom opening since I'm using cork as my accent fabric, I can't really get a nice 
pressing on that to get it flat. So I'm going to use some clips to keep it closed. Now we're going to take it back over to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch all the way around with the seam allowance that is in the pattern. I like to begin at one of the bottom corners. Um, I am not going to back stitch. I like to pull my thread through to the back side and tie it off when I am top stitching. Um, I'm also using a contrasting thread against this brown um, so you can see the stitching a little bit better. So I want it to look nice and neat. So I'm going to not backstitch and just pull my thread through to the other side. Okay, so I will pull my thread through to the opposite side and tie it off and then we'll get it attached to the exterior body. Our next step is to attach the exterior pocket to your exterior body. Um, so get one of your exterior body panels and you're going to place the pocket on the front of it with your cutouts at the top and the turned portion of your pocket at the bottom. Um, measure up the distance that is designated in the pattern and go ahead and place your pocket on. If you're able to pin your pocket in place, you can do that. Um, with my cork, I like to use some double-sided tape. I just put a little bit on the back of the pocket and stick it down. If you're going to use double-sided tape, you can also go along the edges and then just sew over it. I just put mine in the middle. If you do it that way, make sure once you're done sewing the pocket on, you go and remove the double-sided tape because you don't want your pocket taped to your bag later on. All right, so we're going to the sewing machine. We're gonna start at one of your top corners and you're going to sew around to the other top corner. Um, don't sew across the top or you're not gonna have a pocket. You're just gonna have a square on the front of your bag. So let's go to the sewing machine and get this on. You're going to start at one of your top corners and you're just going to stitch your pocket on all the way around to the other top corner. Okay, trim up your threads and your pocket's on. Once your exterior pocket is sewn on, you're going to want to place your exterior uh, body pieces right sides together. And you're going to sew down each side here. Don't sew any of your side cutout, just sew down. Um, the sides of the panel that haven't been cut. Leave the bottom open, leave the top open, only sew the sides. With the seam allowance given in the pattern, go ahead and sew up each side. Okay, now that that's sewn, set it off toward the side. 
and we're going to move on to our next step with the side accents. We are now on the side accent construction section of our pattern. You are going to need your exterior um, body, which I have over to the side in um, the next few steps. And then you're going to need your side accents and your strap anchors, and then your rectangle rings. First thing we're going to do is attach our rectangle rings to our strap anchors. Slide your rectangle ring so it is centered on this middle portion of your strap anchor. And then just get some glue, some of your fabric glue, and put it on one side of your strap anchor. Then we will just fold this in half around your rectangle ring, match up all your edges, and give it a good press to get your glue nice and stuck. The fabric glue that I like to use is Beacon Fabric Tack. Um, it works really well with cork leather um, and it dries quite quickly um, and it doesn't gum up my needles. All right, once your strap anchors are folded around your rectangle rings, we're going to take it over to the sewing machine. We're going to stitch as close as we can to our rectangle ring straight across the top of each strap anchor and then we're going to get them attached to our side accents. I like to put on a zipper foot on my machine. Um, it helps me get a little bit closer to my rectangle ring when I don't have the normal foot in the way. We're just gonna go straight across as close as you can to the rectangle ring. Okay, trim up your threads and take these back over and we will we'll get them attached to our side accents. Next we're going to get our strap anchor attached to our side accent. So I like to put a little piece of double sided tape on the back side of my strap anchor. And then the distance that is in the pattern, you are going to measure down from the top and you're going to center your strap anchor and you're going to measure down and you're going to place the top fold where your rectangle ring is at that distance centered, just like this one. We're going to go back over to the sewing machine and what we're going to do is we're going to sew around the spade portion of our strap anchor. So I want you to start at your spade corner here, and you're going to sew around the spade. And then when you get up to this corner, you're going to go straight across to your starting point. So don't sew up the straight edges here because when we are doing the final assembly, we're going to want to be able to fold those down out of the way. So I want you to just start at one of your spade corners. So around the spade portion of the strap anchor. And then once you get to the other corner, you're gonna go straight across back to your starting point. All right, we are going to sew around our strap anchor um, with the um, seam allowance that is in your pattern. Remember, sew around and then sew across from corner to corner.
Okay. Let's trim up our threads and then we'll get these side accents attached to our exterior body. Our next step is to add our side accents and strap anchors to our exterior body. If you would like to add rivets to your strap anchor, go ahead and do so. Um, I like to add them mostly for decorative purposes, but they do help with a little bit of durability for your strap anchor as well. On your side accent piece, you're going to want to draw lines half an inch in from the sides and the bottom. This is going to be helpful when we're sewing these onto our exterior body. You can just follow the line because you're going to want to stop here at your corners instead of going all the way to the edge. So take your exterior body right side out and you're going to open up where you've done your cutouts at the side. And then we're going to want to take our side accent and we're going to want to place it in that opening with our right sides together. You want to clip the side to the side of the cutout. Make sure the top edges are lined up. So clip one side and then go ahead and clip your other side. Leave the bottom loose for now. Just clip those sides together. We're going to go over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew down our drawn line until we get to our corner here. We don't want to go past our bottom drawn line. We want to stop at the bottom of the or we want to stop where our bottom line is drawn. And we're going to do that on each side. We're going to start on one side and we're going to sew down our um, drawn line until we get to that bottom line that we drew at the bottom of our side accent. I'm going to apologize now. This might get a little unwieldy. And if my fabric bunches up, or flips up and you can't see what I'm sewing, just know I'm sewing down the line until I get to the bottom. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the best angle on this for you guys. So I apologize if all you see is my hand or a crazy amount of fabric. Okay, so you see I sewed down until I got to this line. Make sure you backstitch um, at the start and the stop of that. So we're doing do the same thing on our other edge that I'm gonna have to reclip, but <laughs> we're gonna do the same thing on this other side. Okay, well that side was a little bit easier to see. So again, I just sewed down to that bottom line there in the corner. And we stopped right there. We didn't go all the way to the edge. 
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew across that bottom. But we are going to do a little bit of work on this first. Maybe, there we go. What you're going to want to do on your exterior body, you're going to want to cut a diagonal line from the corner of your exterior body side cut out here. Just um, almost to where you stopped your stitching. Don't go past it and don't cut into your stitching, but cut um, close to your stitching. So you're basically gonna be cutting a 45 degree angle toward where you stopped your stitching. You're gonna do that at both of those corners. Make sure you don't cut your side accent when you're doing this. You only want to cut your exterior body and you're going to do that on both sides. So make sure you move your side accent out of the way and cut that 45 degree or diagonal line from the corner to where you ended your stitches. So you see, I didn't cut all the way to my stitch, but I cut close. So what you're going to do is you're going to flip this side accent out and you're going to be able to fold down your exterior body because of where you clipped. So the corners of your side accent are going to come out through where you clipped your exterior body and you're just going to be able to fold your um, exterior body down so that you can get your side accent across the bottom of your cutout. So open up your seam allowance in your exterior body and Match that up as well as you can with the center point on your side accent. Um, if you're a little off, um, it's better to make sure you don't have any wrinkles in your side accent and just be slightly off. And then, I'm sorry, I'm bumping the camera every which direction here. Line that up to the bottom of your your side accent up to the bottom of your exterior body and clip it in place. Make sure your seam allowance stays folded out. And what we're going to do when we go back over to the sewing machine, we're going to start where we ended our stitching on the sides. So straight across our drawn line and end at our other stitching. Make we are going to start there at our stitch our side stitching where it ended. We're going to sew across our drawn line until we get to our other side stitches. Make sure you have your exterior body out of the way so you're not sewing over your body and you get some weird crease that you have to pick out later. There we are, straight across. When we look at it from this side, we don't have any gaps. So we're good to go. Um, you're going to want to clip off your corners, trim your edges down to about a quarter of an inch, and then we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side.
Now we have both of our side accents attached to our main body, our main exterior body. If your material allows for it, you're going to want to turn your um, seam allowances in toward your side accent and go ahead and give those a press. If it doesn't allow for it, just use some clips and you want your seam allowances to go in toward your side accent. And you're gonna do that on both of your sides. Okay. Now we're going to go over to our sewing machine. And I'm sorry, I keep bumping this, good grief. We are going to um, top stitch our seam allowances flat against our side accent. Okay, and so you're gonna wanna make sure the bottom ones are also flipped in. And you're just gonna stitch, top stitch around your side accent. Let's top stitch around our side accent. Make sure you double check as you're stitching that your seam allowances are turned in against your side accent. Okay, there we have it. Both of our side accents are top stitched. Now we're going to put on the base. We are now at the base construction section of our pattern. You're going to need your base and we're going to do the same thing on the base we did on our side accents. Um, we are going to draw around all four sides, a half an inch in from each side. And you also wanna go ahead and mark your centered top bottom and on the sides. And then we're going to take our firm interfacing. Um, I am using corks, so I don't have it interfaced in any other, but if you're using fabric, you're gonna to wanna to have like a non-woven on this. And then we're going to also add a firm interfacing to give it extra support at the bottom. This interfacing is going to be slightly smaller than the box you drew around your base. So you want to center that interfacing inside the box. You're going to have about an eighth of, eighth of an inch or so on either side or around all the sides between the lines you drew and your interfacing. Just get your fabric glue. Glue that interfacing and then center it in your, on your base. Now, if you are fine with just this glued down, you can skip this next portion. However, if you like to make sure 
your interfacing or your firm interfacing doesn't move around. It shouldn't once it gets sewn in, but if you want to make sure it stays in place with more than just glue, you can go and you can stitch around your interfacing to make sure, give it a little more um, stabilization to your base. You will have visible stitch lines in your final bag. Um, if you use a matching thread, you really won't be able to see them. If you like the look of that stitching on the bottom, use a contrasting thread, which is what I'll be doing. Our next step is to place our base um, to our exterior body. So your exterior body is going to be wrong side out. We're going to take the base, we're going to slide it into the bottom of the exterior body so that the right sides are together. I want you to match up your center at the bottom of your exterior body with the center of your base and clip that in place. Okay, we're going to go over to the machine and we're going to do the same thing here on the base as we did on the side um, accents. You're going to want to start where you're at the corner where your lines meet and you're going to want to stop at the other corner. Don't sew past your lines. You're just going to follow this drawn line from each side line to side line. We're going to sew straight down our drawn line starting at the corners until we get to the other drawn corner. Okay, let's go to the other side. We have it sewn across one side now, so now we need to do our other side. So we're gonna pull our base out and we're going to clip the other side. So match up your center of your exterior body with the center of the base and clip it together. Once you have this clipped in place, you're going to sew down your line just like we did on the other side from corner, drawn corner to drawn corner. We have our base sewn down the long sides now. So now we want to go over to the short sides. But just like with the side accents, we're going to cut our um, exterior body just slightly so that we can fold everything a little bit nicer. So for this one, what you're going to do is you're going to trim or do a little snip here on the exterior body just to the inside of where your stitch stopped and you want to go just short of your stitches so straight line down don't cut into your stitches 
and just to the inside of where you stopped your stitches. You're going to do that at all four. So on this side at each side where you stopped and started your stitches and then on the other side. Make sure you're only cutting your exterior fabric that you're not cutting your base. And make sure you don't cut your stitches. You wanna stop just short of them. Now that you have your cut marks in there, you'll be able to flip your base to the outside of your fabric, just like you did with your side accents. You wanna line up the middle of your base with your seam. Again, open that seam allowance and clip in place. Make sure your edges of your base meet up with the edges of your exterior. Then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now we're gonna go over to the machine we're going to sew down our drawn line, stopping and starting at the stitches on the sides. Your base is sewn onto your exterior body now on all four sides. You're going to want to double check that your stitches meet in the corners. And then go ahead and clip your corners and trim around the base to um, make your seam allowances about a quarter of an inch. And then we'll turn it right side out and you'll be done with your exterior. All right. You have your exterior turned right side out. Double check your corners at your base. Make sure you don't have any holes from where stitches didn't meet. If your material allows for it, you can go give it a nice press. And we're gonna move on to our interior construction. We are now at the snap stabilizer assembly section of our pattern. We are going to get our eight snap stabilizers. Go ahead and turn four of them over. Add glue to one side and glue your two of your stabilizers wrong sides together. Getting all your edges lined up and giving it a good press. Go ahead and do that for the other ones, so you have four double-sided snap stabilizers. All right, now you have all four of your stabilizers, double-sided stabilizers, optionally, at this point, you can sew around each of your stabilizers um, for a, this will give you a double stitch line in your final bag pattern. Um, that is optional. You do not have to do this first circle around um, because you will be sewing them onto your upper lining is just purely a decorative stitch. So if you would like to do that, go over and we're going to sew around each stabilizer. If you're going to be doing the optional stitching, make sure to leave a long tail at the beginning and the end of your stitches instead of back, back stitching. 
um, it'll keep it a little neater and then pull your tails through and tie them off on um, the wrong side. Next, you're gonna to wanna to mark the centers of each of your snap stabilizers. Then on your upper lining pieces, you're going to mark the snap placements. Uh, the measurements are in the pattern. I marked them on the back side here so they could be seen better. Once you have your snap placements marked, go ahead and add your magnetic snaps. Make sure you have both male sides on the same side and both female sides on the same side. Once you have all of your slits cut, you want to go ahead and put the strap or put the snaps on. You will first put your snap through your stabilizer. And then attach this to your upper lining. Go ahead and put a piece of scrap. I use some scrap firm stabilizer to give it some extra support so the snaps don't pull through with use. And then I use my into my rotary cutter, make sure it's closed, to push the prongs of the snap down. All right, so just continue with your other three. Once your snaps are on, I like to put a little bit of scrap interfacing over the top of the metal so that it doesn't rub against the fabric that will be on the other side of it. Um, if your fabric allows, you can just get some woven interfacing and iron it on. Um, you can get some fleece, um, scrap fleece interfacing, glue that on. Um, either way, put a little something behind those snaps so it doesn't rub. Now that we have the snaps attached to the upper lining, we're going to sew around the snap stabilizer. Um, we're just going to go around the edge in a circle on all four of them. We are now ready to put our interior together. So we are at the interior construction section of our pattern, and we're going to take our completed upper lining and our lower lining, and we're going to match our centers. We're going to clip them together.
Now, the material I chose for my exterior material, I did not have quite the length I needed. So you can see my upper linings are a little shorter than they're supposed to be, but um, that's okay because when I do my my seam allowance is large enough that it won't it won't be a problem. But um, yours should match up along the top and along the sides. Um, so please ignore the fact that I have extra that my upper lining is not as long as my lower lining. So we're going to do this on both pieces. We're going to do both upper linings or upper lining to lower lining and then our other upper lining to our other lower lining. Using the seam allowance that is in the pattern, go ahead and stitch down the length of your two pieces. All right, once they're stitched, you wanna flip your upper lining and you want your seam allowance against your upper lining and give that a good press. You can take it over to your sewing machine or you can just do a finger press. And then we're going to top stitch our seam allowance down toward our upper lining. We're going to do the same thing with our other upper lining and lower lining. Once you have both the upper lining and lower lining sewn together, go ahead and set one of your sides, one of your pieces to the side. And we're going to work with this one to put in the zipper pocket. Um, measure down according to the distance in the pattern from your seam line between your upper and lower lining. And you're going to place the top edge of your zipper overlay that distance and centered on your lining piece. If you put double-sided tape on the back of your zipper overlay on the top and the bottom, use that to stick down the zipper overlay. Then we're going to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch around the outer edge of our overlay. I like to leave a long tail at the beginning and end of my overlay um, stitching and again pull it through to the back side when I'm done. I'll get my threads pulled through to the other side and we'll get our zipper pocket. With a zipper overlay sewn on, you're going to want to um, cut a line down the middle of your zipper overlay opening. 
then flip it over to the back. You're going to want to cut out this extra fabric. Make sure you don't cut your overlay. So cut about a quarter of an inch away from your stitch line and just cut a box. Making sure to cut the fabric only and not your overlay. All right, so you've cut out your extra fabric. So now your opening and your overlay is um, open. Next, we're gonna move on to making our zipper pocket. If you're using zipper tape, it is easier to go ahead and keep the pull off until the end of these, this, um, these next few steps. Go ahead and have your pocket so it is right side up. And take your zipper and place it along the top edge of your pocket. And then clip it in place. Okay, so both your zipper and your pocket are going to be right side up and clip it along that top edge. Now we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and we're gonna do a basting stitch across the top. We stitched along this top edge. Now what we're going to do is we're going to rotate our zipper pocket and we're going to take the other side of the zipper and we're going to fold our zipper pocket up and place the other edge of the zipper against the other edge of our pocket. And we're just going to clip it in place. All right, now we're going to sew across this side of the zipper and it will create our pocket. Now that our zipper and pocket are attached, this is where you're going to want to add your zipper pull if you don't already have it on there. Now you're going to want to get some double sided tape you're going to add it to the top and the bottom edge of your zipper. I like to do one side at a time. So I'm going to take the top portion off here and we're going to center our zipper inside our zipper overlay. I like to feel the edges to see where the edge of my zipper is make sure that it's centered left to right. And then I look at the zipper 
to make sure that it's centered up and down between the opening of my zipper overlay. Once I have it where I want it, I go ahead and press that top edge that I took the backing off. Now I'm gonna flip it up and grab the backing off this other edge. And give that a good press. All right, since our zipper, or I'm sorry, since our zipper pocket is already on the zipper, when we sew the zipper into our zipper overlay, we need to make sure that we don't sew the pocket shut. So, turn your lining over, and I want you to take your pocket, and I want you to fold it up toward the top of your lining. Okay, and you can put a little clip up there to make sure it stays where you want. Make sure that you get both pieces of your pocket and make sure that one's pulled all the way out of the way so you're not accidentally sewing one of your pocket sides. So get that pulled up out of the way. Now we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and we are going to sew along this bottom edge of the opening of our zipper overlay. We're gonna start a stitch in front of or to the side we're going to sew across it and we're going to stop it's about a stitch after okay so just across the bottom leave long tails for the um beginning and end we'll pull them through and tie them off All right, so you see, we started a stitch before and we ended a stitch after. We have the bottom portion of our zipper sewn in, so now we need to get to the rest of it. So go ahead and flip your lining back over and you're going to pull your zipper pocket back down into place. So give it a smooth, make sure all, everything is where it needs to be. If you're able to, you can put a couple pins in to hold it in place because you don't want that shifting in the next step. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sew the rest of the way around the pocket. So we're going to go up the side, across the top, and down the side. We're going to start where we ended our stitch, and we're going to stop where we started our bottom stitch. Okay, we've got our zipper sewn in place. Now we need to close up our sides. So what I want you to do is you're going to fold your fabric back out of the way and you're just going to st stitch down the side of your pocket on each side. Stitch over your zipper, even though it's closed here Go ahead and start at the top of your zipper and stitch down to the bottom. Our next step is going to be to prep our lining um, to sew the two sides together. Um, I like to taper 
my seam allowance for my lining. Um, this helps it to not be saggy or bunchy um, once it's in the bag because um, the sides and bottom will be slightly smaller than the exterior. Um, in order to do this with my mathematical brain and wanting everything to be even, I draw my lines on there. So what I do is I take my ruler and I start with a half inch seam allowance. Um, so since I have an upper and a lower portion to my lining, I am actually going to start with um, where I've sewn the upper and the lower portions together. Um, I want the top to be the half inch seam allowance because I want it to be the same size as my exterior. Um, I don't want that tapered up there. So I'm going to start tapering once I get down to this lower section. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here for you. I'm going to start with my ruler at the half inch mark. I'm gonna to have to zoom out actually, so you can actually see what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna start at the half inch mark and I'm going to angle my ruler. So at the bottom, I am at a three quarter mark. So I'm gonna have a gradual taper of a quarter of an inch. This will help it to sit um, a little tighter at the bottom of the bag once everything is put together and turned. So I'm going to draw a line at the diagonal, starting at half an inch and diagonaling down to three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna do that on both sides. Then across the bottom, I am going to measure up three quarters of an inch. And my ruler isn't long enough because I didn't grab my long one. You don't have to mark the bottom. I like to just because I find it's easier to follow a marked drawn line sometimes and it is just makes you think less as you're going okay so now that we have our tapering marks drawn in I'm going to go ahead and draw we're going to box the corners of our lining I'm going to go ahead and draw our box corners in um, just so it's all done at once um, I also like to do this because when I sew my seam allowance I backstitch over where I'm going to cut the corners out. That helps keep, once they're cut, your stitches don't start to unravel. So we're going to do a two inch box on each side. Okay, so there we go. We have our lines drawn in there. We are going to put our two pieces together, right sides together, and we'll get it clipped. You're going to want to put your two lining sides, right sides together. Um, your snaps should help you line everything up, so just Make sure they get snapped in place. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that your upper and lower lining seams are even. So get everything clipped into place. And we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and you're going to follow your lines around. You do want to leave an opening at the bottom about six inches six inches or so um so i put a little mark 
So you're going to start at the top, sew, stop here, back stitch, restart over here, and this is going to be our opening to turn our bag right side out. We have our sides and bottoms sewn together, so now we're going to cut out our corner squares that we're going to box, use to box our corners. So just cut along the lines you drew earlier. So now what you want to do is you want to get your lining opened up and you're going to pull your corners out. Go ahead and turn your seam allowances opposite directions so your seam nests together. You can either clip or you can pen. We are going to go and we're going to sew across the corner here with the same allowance given in the pattern. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other corner. We have our corners boxed to get the bottom onto our lining. We are going to trim our seam allowance is down to about a quarter of an inch on the boxed corners. And then also on the side seam allowance. Don't trim the bottom seam allowance. Um, we want to leave that a little longer or a little wider so that it's easier to sew up our turn opening. Yeah. There we go. Our lining is all put together. We are ready for the final assembly. We are now at our final assembly section of our pattern. You're gonna have your assembled exterior and your assembled, assembled lining, and we're gonna put them together. I like to put my zipper pocket on the opposite side of my front slip pocket on the outside. So I'm gonna have my zip, zipper pocket down and my front pocket up, and you're just going to put your exterior into your lining. Okay, so you're going to want to find your centers. So there's my center.
center and my center. We're going to clip those together. And then on this side, my center, and we're going to clip those together. And then we're going to come over to the sides. And you're going to find your center on your um, side accent and your seam for your lining. And you want to make sure that you push your strap anchor down out of the way. You're going to match up those two centers. Go ahead and open up that seam allowance. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Push your strap, fold your strap anchor down so it's out of the way. Match up the center of your side accent with your side seam of your lining. And now you're going to go around and you're going to go ahead and clip around the rest of the top. Once you have that clipped, head over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew around the top and we'll have this bag almost done. We've got the top stitched around. So now we just need to turn our bag right side out. Your opening at the bottom should be significantly large enough that this won't be overly difficult to get out um, unless you've made this with a thicker fabric, like if it's all pork or all vinyl, then you might have to put a little bit of effort into it. But Go slowly if you need to. There we go. All right. There we have it. Exterior and lining. Let's flip this interior to the inside. If your bag allows for it, you want to take it over and give it a good press to get this top seam nice and flat. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go press that real quick. And then we are going to go back to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch all the way around our top. Okay, I got the top seam all nice and pressed flat. Um, if you can't press your fabric, you can clip it flat. And now we are going to top stitch around the top of the bag.
All right, we have our bag all top stitched and put together. We have our lining in with the tapering. You can see it fits in there nicely. There's not a lot of bunching or sagging at the bottom. You wanna go ahead and get your turn opening sewn up. You can either hand stitch it or take it over to your machine and just do a stitch across the bottom close to the edge, um, however you like to close up your bags. And then we're going to move on to our very last section and get the strap on our Marcel tote. Okay, we are on finishing the strap section of our pattern. It's our last section. Um, we'll get the strap on and our Marcel tote will be done. You're gonna have your strap and you're gonna have your last two strap anchors. Go ahead and turn one of your strap anchors over to the wrong side. And you're going to put some glue along one of the spade portions of the strap anchor. And take your strap and place it on the strap anchor. Your anchor is slightly wider than your one and a half inch strap. So you're going to put your strap so that it is at that widest part of your anchor so it doesn't overhang either side. Flip it over, make sure that rounded point of your spade is in the middle of your strap. Give it a good press. Now, we're gonna take our bag, take one of our D-rings, slide the other portion of our strap anchor through so that the D-ring is again in that middle section. Add some glue to the other side of our strap anchor. And just like when we, whoops, attached them to our side accents, we're just going to fold it in half around the D-ring. We're going to match up our edges. Make sure that your anchor is centered along your strap, that your strap isn't poking out from the sides. And depending on what type of glue you're using, if you want to clip this in place and wait for the, the glue to dry, you can do that. Um, my fabric tack glue dries quite quickly. So I'm going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to do this the exact same way as we did the ones we did here on the side of the bag. We're going to sew as close as we can here across next to the rectangle ring. And then we're going to sew the same way around the spade portion of our anchor. We're going to start at the corner, sew around, stop at the other corner, and sew straight across.
We have our first strap anchor on. If you want to put rivets in this as well, you can do it with the same type of measurements as you did down there. We're going to do the same thing. Now on the other side, you want to make sure that your strap is not twisted as you put it on. So double check your strap isn't twisted. Head to your sewing machine and you're gonna do the exact same thing. You're going to sew across as close as you can to the rectangle ring and then sew around your spade. And then my friends, we will be done. Our Marcel tote is complete. We have our Strap anchors on. And there we are. Clip the snaps. I hope you enjoyed making this one. Thanks for watching.